Hello everyone. Today I am going to discuss about the last topic of your module 5 of the course Virology. And the topic uh, to be discussed today is general principles of viral vaccination. So first of all, uh, I would like to start with a brief history of vaccination. So already in the ancient world, it was common knowledge that uh, an individual rarely was infested twice with the same disease. This observation led to the practice of inoculation that uh, has been documented in China more than thousand years ago before uh, Dr. Jenner's remarkable study. Even the term uh, immunity was used to, in, in, in reference to plague uh, during the 14th century. Progress in natural sciences and the development of experimental techniques during the 18th century led to the systematic use of inoculation uh, to fight against smallpox. Uh, one of the most serious uh, threats uh, at that time. In the uh, early 18th century, uh, variolation, the transmission of uh, small, uh, presumably sublethal volume of uh, volumes of liquid uh, from smallpox uh, ostules, was introduced in England by uh, Lady Mary uh, Wortle Montagu. Uh, Lady Montagu survived infection with smallpox herself. Impressed with this method of uh, variolation, she ordered the embassy surgeon Charles uh, Maitland to inoculate her five-year-old son uh, after her uh, letter return to London in uh, 1721. Lady Montagu introduced the method uh, uh, to the physician of the royal court. Thereafter, uh, variolation become quickly popular among physicians in Europe. However, uh, variolation was not uh, without uh, risk. In average, two to three percent of the variolated person died from the disease, uh, but the mortality associated with variolation was uh, very much lower than uh, that associated with the naturally occurring smallpox. So. Uh, here, with this, uh, with this uh, uh, background knowledge, uh, the modern concept of vaccination uh, dates back to 1796, when this particular uh, scientist, Edward Jenner, you can see in the picture, a vaccinating a uh, young, young man, so uh, rather a child. So when Edward Jenner based on empirical observation used uh, liquid from um, pustules of cowpox to introduce uh, protective immunity in human individual. Today, the use of cowpox as a vaccine is considered to be uh, the landmark of, of, of modern vaccination concept. So here you can see this vaccination is a Latin word coming from, from cow, means vacca, vacca means cow. And Edward Jenner used this term, vaccination. So it's cowpox virus provided immunity in prevention of the smallpox. And here you can see that in 1796, Jenner deliberately inoculated people with uh, small doses of cowpox, that is the vaccine virus from pustules and successfully demonstrated that, that protection against smallpox uh, could be achieved. Uh, Jenner uh, termed this, uh, this preventive uh, procedure as, as, as vaccination. And uh, uh, over the following decades, inoculation against smallpox using cowpox become widely accepted in Europe. 
So while uh, Jenner at his, his time neither understood nor uh, could explain uh, the biological basis of vaccination, uh, his concept was successful and provided protection uh, from smallpox apparently due to cross immunity between smallpox and cowpox. Until the end of the 19th century, diseases were, uh, were believed to be uh, caused by invisible microbes, uh, which were spontaneously generated uh, in, in response to bad air and other environmental triggers, as well as the belief, uh, was that, uh, the belief that uh, a particular group uh, believed that, uh, that, that imbalance in the body caused what were actually infectious illness. So progress in microbiology as well as virology uh, since the late 19th century elucidated the modern concept of communicable disease. And the two pioneers are Louis Pasteur and Robert Koch. Pasteur and Koch established that microorganisms were the true cause of infectious diseases. These discoveries lead to the science of immunology. Hence, further advances in, in vaccinology uh, were gained from an increasing understanding of the etiology of infectious diseases and post, uh, post pathogen uh, interactions. So, Louis Pasteur adopts the principle of vaccination uh, for his scientific work. So, Pasteur challenged the spontaneous generation theory of microbes, while Robert Koch demonstrated that uh, infectious agents transmit diseases. He defined uh, four postulates which uh, established uh, an, an, an individual agent as the cause of a disease. In addition, uh, in the late uh, 1870s, Pasteur developed the first uh, attenuation procedure uh, for, uh, for, 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 for pathogens, mostly focusing on rabies. So uh, Pasteur's approach uh, provided microorganisms uh, less pathogenic, but still immunogenic. Using animals as a, as, as a, as a live propagating medium, uh, Pasteur and his, 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 his associates were able to produce attenuated rabies vaccine, attenuated rabies virus rather, uh, of different strains uh, of which uh, the weakest uh, one would be uh, used to prepare a vaccine. In uh, 1885, the first human individual was vaccinated with a live attenuated rabies vaccine. So he has just attenuated the rabies virus, so isolated from, from dog. So rabies virus and has, 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 has um, then, uh, diluted uh, this particular virus, attenuated virus, uh, in different dilutions and the lowest dilution or the weakest strength of the virus he has used for the preparation of vaccine. However, due to technical uh, limitations of the time uh, of vaccine production, uh, fatal cases of rabies in vaccinated individuals uh, occur. Then, uh, what is the terminology of vaccination? So, vaccination is, uh, is, is one of the most effective medical interventions to, to reduce uh, morbidity uh, as well as mortality in infectious diseases. So, it's a tool. You can say it's a tool or technique. The main principle of vaccination is, uh, is, to, is, 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 the, is the proactive uh, introduction of a of a, of, a, of a protective immune, immune response by mimicking the natural interactions of an infectious pathogen that may be virus, that may be bacteria, with the human immune system. So this is the this is this is actually what we are going for. Or this is the main principle of vaccination. So the general rule is uh, that, uh, that that the more similar a vaccine is to the disease-causing form 
of the organism, the better immune response to the vaccine. So this is the general rule for uh, preparing a vaccine or vaccination. So what is actually vaccine? So vaccine is nothing but an antigenic material. Can be uh, either uh, live, or, but we can form of, of, of either bacteria or virus or maybe a killed or inactivated form of these pathogens or maybe some purified material, mostly the proteins or glycoproteins. That stimulates adaptive immunity against the disease, that protect our, our body, protect the body of the human being from a particular type of disease, and also stimulates bodies uh, by, 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 by stimulating body's immune system to recognize the agent as a foreign particle and destroy it, and not only destroy it for a single time, but it can remember it, it can memorize these incidents. So this is all about what, what is, the, is the definition of a vaccine. Now, so vaccine actually, uh, actually just boosting us the immune system of our, of, of, of our, our immune system. So our immune system is of two types, or immunity, better, better to say, immunity is of two types. One is the innate immunity, another one is the acquired immunity. So innate immunity that is present from the birth of any individual that is coming or inherited from mother. So once activated, the same mechanism occurs regardless of which challenges is encountered or previous exposure. And here the response is immediate. So the innate immune system represents a first line of host defense against the pathogen that surmount the body's physical and chemical barriers. So what are the physical and chemical barriers? The barriers are skin, ciliated epithelia, mucous membrane, stomach acids, and digestive enzymes. So these are body's physical and chemical barriers. So they are acting uh, for, to, to, to protect our body from, uh, from the pathogens or against the pathogens. So innate defense mechanisms are mediated by cellular effector cells and non-cellular effector molecules such as complement or lysozyme. So cellular elements of the innate immune system are uh, generated in the bone marrow and migrate into the blood and then to different tissues of the body. So tissue residing microphases or the dendritic cells and mobile phagocytic cells such as eosinophil, neutrophil, monocytes as well as the NK cells which is a natural killer cell represents the major cellular element of the innate immunity. Next one is the adaptive immunity. So adaptive immunity uh, which, of, which, which is uh, the acquired form of the developed form of immunity by an individual only after a specific challenge in, is encountered. Means if the individual has infected with a particular disease then it will develop an antibody. So second time it may come back. So resulting adaptive immune products are effective only against the specific challenge. So it's a specific type of immune, immune system. So there is a lag for the development of adaptive immunity, but the secondary response is almost immediate. So the first one primary response is delayed type, but the secondary response is immediate. Memory, uh, uh, they, can, they can memorize this, and this is very, very, it has some, 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 some greater efficiency. What are the efficiency? It's highly specific, of the specificity, as well as self to non self determination or discrimination. So it can determine, it can discriminate whether it's a self or non self. Means the particle is from the body or outside of the body. So, Adaptive immunity represents the second line of immunological defense. The first line was innate, the second line is that adaptive immunity. So antigen recognition by the adaptive immune system initiates 
a focused, highly specific immune response that results in elimination of the pathogen and also termination of the infectious disease. Moreover, in the course of an adaptive immune response, antigen-specific memory cells are generated that will provide a faster and stronger immune response whenever the body is challenged by the same pathogen again in the future. So the cellular elements of the adaptive immune response are lymphocytes that are able to specifically recognize antigens, that is the component of an infectious pathogen and consider it as a foreign particle of the body and potentially dangerous particle, dangerous form. So there are two main subsets of lymphocytes, the B cells, which initially develop in the bone marrow and the T cells, which are generated in thymus, activated B cells can produce and secrete antigen specific antibodies, these proteins that will bind to the antigen. And T cells comprise of different type of lymphocytes that confirm either regulatory or effective function. So T cells with regulatory function preferentially express the cluster of differentiation that is called the CD. So we can, you can see CD4, CD8 like that, the cluster of differentiation, four cell surface proteins and they're referred to as CD4 positive T cells, effective T cells, CD8 positive T cells like that. So that is how adaptive immunity is actually acting here. So what are they doing? They are developing antibody in our body. So what is antibody? We are memorizing something. So this is in the form of an antibody. So an antibody is a protein that is produced by the lymphocytes it's a type of WBC in the response to the presence of a specific antigen. So the picture here is here in the picture you can see here in the picture you can see this is the structure of antibody. This is the light chain. Here you can see the light chain and the heavy chain. Here's the heavy chain. This is the conserved part or the constant part and this is the variable part. These are the antigen binding sites, so why sept? These are called immunoglobulins. So specific antibodies bind to a specific antigen and cause their destruction. So this is the site where the antibody can bind with a particular type of antigen, okay? So next is, what is the basic concept of vaccine immunology? The primary goal of vaccination is the induction of protective immunity against disease causing infectious pathogen that is microorganisms like bacteria virus fungi etc etc so to achieve this objective of vaccines mostly are designed vaccines are mostly designed to address natural defense mechanisms and activate the immune system in a manner similar to natural infections so vaccine development therefore strongly depend on our understanding of the human, human immune system. The human immune system comprises two major components or compartments. The first one is innate, the second one is adaptive. That I have already discussed. Innate and adaptive immunity works sequentially to identify invading pathogens and in, initiate the most effective defense response. Here you can see the innate immunity, they are acting not specifically, but the adaptive one, sorry, the, but the adaptive one, they are actually functioning as, in a specific way. In both the cases is humoral and uh, cellular immune, immune, immunity is there. So this innate one is acting as a first line of defense, Adaptive one is the second line of defense via complement activation, interferons, tumor necrotic factor, macrophages, nucleophiles. These are the primary line of defense. 
Whereas antigen specific B cells, antibodies, and antigen specific T cells that are actually responsible for the second line of defense, acting as a second line of defense, and also memorize the T. So the interaction of innate and adaptive immunity is crucial to generate and also to maintain a protective immune response. Mostly, this antigen presenting cell, the specialized here, you can see this antigen presenting cells, especially the specialized antigen presenting cells, are important to bridge the two compartments of the immune system. So, antigen presenting cells are bridging these two compartments, is the innate one and the adaptive one. Now, if you have administered the vaccine in your body, then what will happen? So initiation of a vaccine response. So following injection, here you can see number one, following injection, the pathogen associated patterns here, this antigen, pathogen associated patterns contained in vaccine antigens attract dendritic cells, these are the dendritic cells, monocytes and neutrophils. In the second form one, you can see here, here, the three different type of cells, monocytes, dendritic cells and neutrophils that patrol throughout the body. If vaccine antigens or adjuvants elicit sufficient danger signal here, it stays three. If they here, if they elicit sufficient danger signal, this activates monocytes, activates monocytes and the dendritic cells. Here in figure four, you can see activate figure here three. This activates monocytes and dendritic cells, which changes their surface. Here you can see surface receptors and induces their migration along the lymphatic vessels. So lymphatic vessels to lymph node, to the drainage limb, draining lymph node, where the activation of T cell and B cells took place. Here you can see, so the T cells, the T cells, each T cells expresses a unique antigen specific receptor molecule. Here you can see unique, this is the dendritic cell, this is the native, native T cells. They have a specific antigen specific receptor molecule, TCR. So TCRs, however, cannot directly recognize complete pathogenic structure. Instead, the tissue recognizes molecular fragments that have to be presented in association with major histocompatibility complex. Means molecules at the cell surface of antigen presenting cells, in consequence, activation of T lymphocytes strongly depends on the interaction with the APCs and professional APCs derived from the specialized phagocytes termed as dendritic cells ingest pathogen-derived proteins. After phagocytosis, the antigens are broken down and processed, and the resulting peptide fragment are transported to the cell surface, where they are embedded into the MHC molecule, these are histocompatibility complex molecule. An individual T cell can be activated by a peptide antigen for which it expresses the specific receptor. Moreover, besides its antigen specificity, the TCR means the, uh, the specific receptor molecule, T cell specific receptor molecule, additionally can only interact with the MHC molecule of its own tissue type. This quality is described uh, as a self restriction and ensures that only cells of the same organism will interact with uh, to, to, to mount an adaptive immune, immune response. So here you can see different type of TH cells. So T cells activated antigen bearing, uh, bearing uh, 
this uh, uh, dendritic cells. Uh, so they are actually recognized antigen in the context of MHC class two molecule, and CD4 T cell uh, fulfill uh, modulatory as well as effector functions. Here you can see that the helper T cells. Here you can see different type of helper T cells and the follicular helper T cells Th1, Th2. They are actually responsible for the promotion of immune response against intercellular pathogen. Th1 and Th2 is the activation of the eosinophil and T uh, a uh, follicular Th is promotion of the antibody secretion from the B cell. And along with that, they will induce uh, 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 induce the T cells, T helper cells, to produce some cytokines like the, or like like interleukins, interleukins uh, four, five, uh, six, thirteen that preferentially activate innate immune cells, means the eosinophils and the mast cells. So in this way, the two type of immune system they are. Uh, interacting with each other and responsible for that, for that, uh, for, for to, 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 to work against the pathogen or uh, to remember uh, to generate immune and immunoglobulin. Now, the B cells, the antibody mediated protection. Here you, you can see the toxin as a, uh, here, the antibody produced and three different type of Method complement mediated lysis, antigen agglutination, and opsonization of agosatosis can happen. So, this type of cells, B cells, they represent the second effector compartment of the adaptive immune response, like the T cells. So, here the B cells, uh, they are actually uh, in contrast to the T cell receptor. B cell receptor binds directly to the molecular structures of pathogen with no need for previous antigen processing. So antigen binding by the appropriate BCR, B cell receptor, activates the B cell and induces proliferation and differentiation into plasma cells. So plasma cells produce the secret and, and, and secret large amount of antibodies. Here you can see the secret large amount of antibody okay so here and that release in the blood and other body fluid so antigen specific antibodies are an important effector concept of adaptive immunity here you can see the hc fragment means the constant fragment this one this one is a constant fragment a structural feature common to all type of antibodies uh, of a given isotype and the variable region is there this position this portion is a variable portion and for that we can have five different type of immunoglobulins that um, there's IgA, IgD, IgE, IgG and Ig, IgM. So here uh, this is the cross talk between the two we have already discussed how do vaccines uh, mediate uh, protection so this is the first line of defense, innate immunity. This is the second line of defense. So the dendritic cells, antigen-presenting cells, neutrophil, NK cells, macrophages. So they are is a movement to the local lymph node, and they are the antigenic peptides are synthesized. They are actually responsible for this CD4 or CD8 uh, type inducing this and in interleukins like IL4, 5, and 13. So Th2 or T helper cells type 2, they are actually responsible for this function, then proliferation, differentiation, and then the B cells, activating the B cells, and the B cells as well as the uh, cytotoxic lymphocytes. So they are actually, the B cells are actually, uh, actually uh, uh, synthesizing the antibodies. The antibodies are either uh, the antibodies or else the uh, cytotoxic T lymphocytes. So this cytotoxic T lymphocytes may interact with the uh, with the pathogen or else the antibody interact with the, uh, sorry, interacting with the pathogens, interacting with the pathogens and then uh, just uh, protecting our body. 
Now, how immune response uh, occurs after vaccination? So, uh, immune response uh, occurs uh, by activation of B cells after the first encounter with an antigen and subsequent differentiation into plasma cell usually needs 10 to 14 days. So initially plasma cells uh, will typically produce IgM and uh, uh, type antibodies. IgM antibodies are large molecules consisting of five bivalent uh, antibody molecules linked together to exhibit gene binding regimes. So in the further course of the immune response, antibody production will switch to uh, the IgG uh, isotype, which also represents here, you can see this IgG here, IgG uh, isotype, which also represents the major isotype of B cell uh, memory responses here, the B cells, memory, memory B cells, B cells responses. So, sorry. So B cells responses or memory B cells, depending on the specific circumstances of B cell activation here, here is your B cell activation. Here you can see B cell activation. Antibody production may switch to IgA, uh, which is secreted to the mucous membrane or IgE, mainly for the defense of, of, of infection by the parasite. In most cases, optimum this is cell activation um, uh, and differentiation into antibody secreting plasma cells will only be achieved uh, when, when the B and both, both the B and T cells are simultaneously activated. B and T cells are simultaneously activated uh, by the element of the same pathogen. So T cell independent direct activation of B cells occur only in response to uh, repetitive antigen structures such as, such as carbohydrate found in bacterial cell wall. Uh, these T cell independent responses are characterized by the situation of low affinity antibodies of IgM type. So, uh, after that, extra follicular and germinal uh, center responses to protein antigen. So in response to protein antigen reaching the lymph node, so they are reaching the lymph node of or, or the spleen, B cells. So here you can see they are uh, uh, reaching the lymph node. Now you can see, so B cells capable of binding to the to this antigen uh, with their surface immunoglobulin uh, undergo a brisk activation. So this step one, step one, this is a brisk activation and uh, in, 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 in an extra follicular reaction, the extra follicular reaction, B cells rapidly differentiate into plasma cells in stage, stage, stage two. Uh, here you can see in stage two, here, here you can see in stage two, so B cells rapidly differentiate uh, into plasma cells, and that produces low affinity antibodies like IgG and IgA isotypes. That appears at low levels in the serum within uh, a few days after immunization. So you can see here, low level after immunization within a few days. So antigen specific T helper cells, uh, TH here you can see antigen specific T helper cells here, stage five, this one TH. Here. So here you can see this antigen uh, uh, specific T helper cell, helper T cells that have been activated by the antigen uh, bearing this this antigen bearing this this one is antigen so antigen uh, bearing dendritic cells this one is the dendritic cells antigen bearing dendritic cells to trigger some antigen specific b cells they are triggering the antigen specific b cells here to migrate towards the follicular this one is a follicular uh, follicular dendritic sensor fdc here 
you can see the FDC follicular dendritic cell. So initiating the germinal center, this is the germinal center. The same thing is happening here also, initiating the germinal center here. Uh, in germinal centers, B cell receive additional signals from the uh, follicular T uh, helper cells. Uh, here, FT, FHT, uh, sorry, FH, uh, TFH here, follicular helper T cells and undergo massive clonal proliferation, switch from IgM towards IgG, IgA, and IgE. So here you can see the blood uh, uh, compared to this one. So massive proliferation of IgG and IgA. Undergo affinity maturation and differentiating the plasma cells, secreting a large amount of antigen-specific antibodies at the end this, of this GC reaction, a few plasma cells exit North spleen and migrate to the survival niche, mostly located in the bone marrow. So few will be migrated to the bone marrow, where they survive through signals provided by the supporting stomach cell. Next one is the generation of B cell memory responses. So here you can see that B cells are generated in response to T-dependent antigens that we have already uh, discussed. So in the step one, here you can see this part we have already discussed in the previous slide, this part also. So in the second step, means in, in the, the germinal centers, in parallel to plasma cells, here in parallel to plasma cells, what is happening here? So at the exit of GCs, these B cells do not differentiate into antibody secreting plasma cells, but in memory B cells that transiently migrate through the blood. This is the transiently migrate through the blood. So primary response is here, secondary response is here. So transiently migrate through the blood towards the extra follicular areas. This is the extra follicular area they persist there as uh, resting cells until re-exposed to their specific antigen. Upon secondary antigen exposure, so if this is this is this this dotted line, this is a this line, and this solid line is a primary exposure response, a primary antigen exposure, and this dotted line of the dashed line is a secondary exposure. So as I said, adaptive. In case of adaptive secondary response is immediate. So here you can see upon secondary antigen exposure here, upon secondary exposure, memory B cells, this one, these memory B cells are readily proliferating and differentiating to plasma cells here in stage seven, secreting large amount of high affinity antibodies. Here you can see large amount of high affinity antibodies that may be detected in the serum and within few days after boosting. So this is how the B memory cell responds to place. So the principle of vaccine development, so mostly what is happening in our body. So in case of a pathogen infection, so pathogen invade in our body, that is infection is causing some disease or higher toxin production. And then our immune system uh, will try to protect it. If it can, the individual will definitely be cured and will be protected. And vaccine, we are using the same thing, only just reducing its virulence property, but antigenic property remains same. Yet the antigens relevant for protection, adjuvants that controls the immune response. So, in this case also, same type of immune response took place and our body is protected. So to protect our body, we are giving up exposure of the same type of pathogen so that if in near future, this particular pathogen, outbreak of this particular pathogen occurs, then our body may be safe. So it's a protective measure. Vaccine development or vaccination is nothing but a protective step. Now, how this immune system memorizes this? So this uh, picture, 
uh, illustrated as illustrated here. So T helper cell, T helper nucleosides plays an important role here. Here the blue line, here you can see the blue line is the T cell response, or T uh, lymphocyte response, and the red line is the antigenic response. The red line is the antigenic response, I'm sorry, antibody response. So T helper lymphocytes play an important role in the regulation of, uh, here, here you can see in the regulation uh, of both the T and B type of cell responses as well as cytotoxic T lymphocytes. However, the most important property of adaptive immunity, this is the innate one and this is the adaptive one. So in most cases, a primary immune response occurs uh, due to this, this one should be I, uh, it's IgM and it's IgG. So the first one is primary adaptive immune response via IgM and the secondary adaptive response via IgG. So it may be months or years, and within a week, uh, primary immune response that took place via IgM. So uh, you can see here, so immunological memory response, uh, response assuring a stronger and a faster protective immune response uh, whenever challenged again uh, by the same pathogen. So while the primary immune response, uh, response on an average uh, text, uh, 10 to 15, 15 days here. Here, the primary average response takes here. Here, you can see the spike. Uh, primary average response, so it may, be, it may take 10 to 15 days to build up. Immunological memory shortens the immunological uh, reaction time uh, to a couple of days, thereby effectively preventing future reinfections with the same agent. So, here you can see secondary infection. So, here you can see the time take place. Uh, uh, time uh, to pick uh, adaptive response in case of primary one. So uh, it is uh, days uh, per week, it's 10 to 15 days. But here in case of uh, second, uh, secondary response, uh, immune adaptive response, it's hours. So what is the principle of vaccination? So principle of vaccination is, a, this is a, the primary goal of vaccination is to provide a protective immunity by inducing a memory response to an infectious microorganism using a, a non-toxic antigen preparation. And it is very important to produce uh, immunity uh, of the appropriate kind uh, like antibody or cellular immunity. And, uh, and, 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 and antibodies uh, produced as a result of uh, immunization are effective primarily against extracellular organisms and uh, there are products also like toxins. So cell-mediated immunity, immunity means T cell or macrophage based uh, induced by vaccination is, is, is very important, particularly in preventing intracellular viral or bacterial or fungal infections. So to the, the, the ultimate goal uh, of any immunization program is to uh, eradicate uh, a particular disease. So this requires uh, that the infection is limited only to humans uh, with, with no animals or en environmental reservoirs and the absence of any subclinical or carrier states in human. So achieving elimination requires a high level of herd immunity. So herd immunity means the resistance to the spread of a, of a, of a, of a contagious disease uh, within, within a population that uh, results in uh, in, in, a, in a sufficiently high proportions of individuals uh, are, are immune to the disease, uh, especially uh, via vaccination. So this requires, uh, requires um, considerable infrastructure, definitely. Infrastructural supports should, should be there uh, to ensure that uh, all, uh, all at-risk populations are targeted for immunizations. So this has been achieved uh, for smallpox uh, uh, and also we are close to the elimination of polio. Thank you.